OK, so you probably saw this one coming, a full England player debrief following the Six Nations 2024. Are they probably going to go on the summer tour? Is it a question mark or is it time to call it a day for England? Although I'm sure we'll pick a full summer tour side as the Premiership progresses. Of course, we've got that Japan game and then two against New Zealand. So a big summer for sure. And it's good that England finished the Six Nations on a high, even though they lost that game against France, which I actually called all the games in that final round surprisingly I said France by one point they won by two I said Italy were going to beat Wales Ireland were going to beat Scotland maybe not such a big prediction but yeah it was a close one but I thought France would have a little bit too much power once England had lost Faye Waboso and Chandler Cunningham South to injury so that seems to be the case but still a good uh, finish to the tournament so let's get into it because there's plenty of players to get through here I'll try to list everyone who has been in the England squad if not on the pitch here we go the four uh, hookers that were in the squad were Luke Kandicki who wasn't used he seemed to be there as an experienced guy if they needed him a little bit of a waste I guess but it's good he wasn't used because we didn't have injuries to uh, George and Dan so for him it's probably time to call it a day I'd say I think there's other hookers coming through that we need to have a look at so in the summer we saw Jamie Blumai in the squad we saw him in that A game and maybe it's time for him to have a crack at the England team and the George Dan combo works really well with Dan as the apprentice George as the master and similar to the Hartley George player apprentice sort of thing Dan is the guy with the physicality the explosive nature and Jamie George the master of his craft uh, but not particularly explosive around the pitch anymore although he performed as well as he could and I think Theo Dan gained a stack of experience and performed well and was trusted more and more to get game time he did make one bad overthrow in that France game I seem to remember but his throwing seemed to be pretty good as well so surely Theo Dan's time is coming looks like he's being groomed he could do with a start at some point although I don't know do you play him in the Japan game but then you're building up to those All Blacks games so a tricky one but he's gonna need to start at some point then the props now we've learned with England it's no scrum no win or that's the same with every team I guess but we've had Joe Marler and Dan Cole brought in by Steve Borthwick to shore up this scrum and and they've done it they've done a good job they've clearly all worked hard on their scrummaging Genji scrummaging looked pretty solid uh, Will Stewart looked pretty solid as well so they did their job and I think they probably should be retained anyway because there's not really anyone else on the horizon so it's maybe a bit of an indictment of the English system to say there's not enough props to go to um, some may argue but there's no obvious answers to the prop game we've talked about it for ages so I think uh, Genj Mahler, Cole Stewart the guys that were used I think it's a yes for the summer tour for now unless someone really uh, kicks on Beno Urbano and Joe Hayes they're a question mark because we didn't really see them much so we don't know but if there's something bigger and better that comes along in the end of this premiership season maybe get them in but I could see it being the six same guys there maybe with one change maybe two I don't know but I don't see Marler and Cole going anywhere at the moment especially with those big boys coming around the corner the second rose and it's cold we didn't see a lot of him which is a shame I understand it because Chesham Otoji and then Martin when he came back they hogged the game time I would have liked to have seen Cole a bit more but practically maybe it wasn't possible so it is a question mark for him although I do think he's a really good player who has matured nicely physically and he'd do a good job if he got the chance so it's a question mark but probably a yes but we haven't seen too much evidence Ollie Chesham well he does look a bit lightweight sometimes in that second row he is still very young and willowy when he went to six maybe it suited him a bit better at the moment I don't know if England want to play those kind of three second rows with the big line out jumper like they did with Courtney Laws at six maybe Chesham is a good call at the moment and we saw Charlie Yules pop up in the squad there at some point he is just a really good trainer he's a good guy he is good to learn off coaches love him he probably was never going to play unless there were major injuries but I think coaches have repeatedly shown this is a team man who's really useful having in the squad it's a no I think for the summer but he's there if there's an emergency I guess but anyway Maratoje we saw at the end of the Eddie Jones era and the early Steve Borthwick era that Otoje seemed to have a bit of an issue with fitness in the end of games in the second half of games he was really leggy I don't know what that was whether it was an injury or a training block he was going through but he's definitely not that anymore his uh, engine was brilliant in this Six Nations really low error count really low penalty count just getting that disrupting in that physicality in nicely 
you know, he's really on form, so that's great news for England. He definitely goes on the summer tour, as does George Martin. We've only seen a little bit of him, uh, but he's that big number five tight head second row that we've been asking for. He needs more experience, obviously. He will get bigger and stronger as well, which is a scary thought, but he definitely goes. So Chesham and Tojo Martin, they are definite, I think, for that tour. Then the back rows. These are the ones we saw. Such a shame. I was so crestfallen that Cunningham South got injured, calf injury for that France game because, man, he would have been so good off the bench. Love to see him start a game at some point as well. So hopefully his injury isn't too bad. He's very raw. He's been learning the game. He's talked about his line-out jumping, improving and things like that. But this guy is a physical freak and you need those things. The power, the size, the height, it's super important. And I think he's got some decent offloading skills as well. So I think he could be a really big player for England as they use him correctly, get him a few starts. Ben Curry we didn't see and maybe this is the end of the road for Ben Curry because there's other guys coming online like Tom Pearson, Guy Pepper. So maybe that was his shot and it didn't happen for him. For Alex Dombrandt, he made an impact off the bench. He didn't do anything wrong, but he didn't get any start. So hard to say, yes, he's a definite for the summer. We'll see if players like Barbary come online as well and they're fit and raring to go. So his place is in jeopardy, but he definitely did everything he could in this Six Nations. Then on to the star man, Ben Earl, continues to be phenomenal. Is number eight his best position? Probably not, but he's doing a great job. A bit like a Tom Curry filling in there, but he is much more explosive than Tom Curry was. And he probably is a seven, but we do have a lot of options at seven as well. So for now, he probably stays at eight until, like I said again, maybe someone like a Barbary or a Tom Willis, um, they break through. So a yes for him for sure. Then two guys that we didn't see get on the pitch for England seniors, though they were in the squad and they did both play in that A game. And I know it was against the second string Portugal team, but God, they look good. And in the Premiership, they look so ready. One reason why I'm really confident that Guy Pepper will make the step up to the senior team and get some starts is physically, he is very robust. He's big, he's tall. And International 7, it does help sometimes. I was having that conversation online about Henry Pollock of the under 20s and many saying, yes, he looks fantastic. Fantastic, getting man of the match performances, but how is his physicality going to stack? Is he going to be a bit small for a seven? Small sevens can make it, but it's a bit harder. Guy Pepper has got that physicality and he's good over the ball. So I think he could be very well suited to international rugby. I'd like to see them both go on the summer tour as it stands now. Ethan Roots came in when we needed someone and he stepped up and he said, I'm a solid player. I hit hard, I tackle hard. I've got a good psychology. He's not afraid. Um, it's still a question mark. Has he got that top end ability like a Chandler Cunningham South? I'm not sure, but if you need someone to play six, he's a good shout. And Underhill had a real resurgence, didn't he? I wasn't sure if he still had it, but he definitely got better and better and better. He knows he may not have got that chance again, and he's really grabbed it. Plus, he's made some good plays in attack. Of course, he's made his shuddering tackles. But yeah, he's a, a summer tour guy for sure. It looks like he's got a couple more years in him. So good on him. Really good Six Nations. And of course, the sponsor during the Six Nations has been Lifting Giants. They're the only company that actually make properly designed ergonomic lifting blocks that fit your hand that have been proven to help line out lifting if you're a line out lifter if you know one and you want to be nice to them there's one week left where it's 20 percent off with rugby analyst 20 in the link below so do use that if you want to get a pair into the backs <laughs> the scrum halves danny care there he's got over 100 caps which is fantastic and i think he said in the news today that he's mulling over his international future but maybe that is it now. That is his swan song. He said he loved his time in the Six Nations. People are learning off him, I'm sure. But physically, he's not the same as he was. He hasn't got that break as you're not going to have at 37. Um, so I don't think he's that impact sub anymore. So probably time to move on for him. So it's a no, I'm afraid. The Mitchell did pretty well in that France game. Wasn't his best potentially. I know I make a joke that he looked worried in his face and that's kind of a ridiculous criticism. But in that French game, you do see a little bit of dithering at times from him. I want him to be really bold in his decision making. 
Ben Spencer got a little bit of game time, I would have liked him to have a lot more because I think he's at the moment a better player than Danny Kerr, but it didn't happen. Harry Randall was in the squad, didn't play seniors, but played the A game and looked great. But yeah, Portugal's second team and he could definitely go on a tour um, in the summer. We'll see. And you know, other players like Van Portfleet might be coming back. So watch this space. But Alex Mitchell is definitely yes. Then the three fly halves, they're all yeses. Finn Smith, we saw a bit of, although he got injured, but what we saw was pretty decent. And then the old discussion between Ford and Smith, I know it gets the comment section going. Ford had a stellar game against France. The best I've seen him possibly ever. His playmaking was brilliant. His kicking was on point. The question always stands, though, he doesn't give anything in attack. And I'm not kind of criticising him. I'm just saying it as a fact. He hasn't got the running game in defence. He's actually worked out a way of defending where he stands bolt upright, which I don't like, but he's not going aggressive with it. And he tries to rip the ball. That's his thing. So he's not a destructive tackler like Owen Farrell never will be. So he does have some limitations to his game, but he maxed it out against France. Now, Marcus Smith, we know, has the running game, the step for sure. But he just gets a bit too excited, maybe. That's the criticism. Although I'd like to see him get some starts because I think he could be really great given some time. But he does get a bit too frantic, doesn't he, sometimes? So hopefully he gets some starts and calms down. But Ford and Smith, absolutely. And Finn Smith, keep going with Finn Smith, who could actually be the best of the three because he seems to have that middle of the road. He's got some physicality. He's got a great kicking game. He's a bit calmer as well, but he's still got a decent running game. So he actually could be the sweet spot that England go to in the future. That's going to be fascinating. And there's no one really pressing them at the moment for those three places. Now Owen Farrell's gone to France. So they all go on the summer tour, which is good for continuity, especially because we saw that attacking game click. So it's nice to have these three guys who have had the reps in training. Then the centres, which is always a little bit of a worry. Ollie Lawrence and Henry Slade. Decent performance against France, Slade with his passing and kicking, Lawrence with his power game. So I think they're definite yeses for the summer. But still question marks in my head for Lawrence. He does lose the ball in contact a bit. And I remember saying that about him when he was very young, uh, just coming into the England side, even for the under 20s. That is his thing. He needs to become just that bit more reliable. And Henry Slade, he's not the quickest. He's not the biggest. So he's, again, he's kind of maxing out his ability. There's no one right there to take that shirt off him at the moment. To Alangi is more of a 12 now, but he's going to France. So that was his last game for England. So he's a an end of the line for him. And we saw Fraser Dingwall, who is he's a lovely player. He does a lot of things right. I just don't think he has it at the top end in the international game physically. So it's an end of the line for me, for him. But no, like I said, I really like him. And he's going to do great for Northampton, I'm sure. We didn't see Oscar Beard, but he's an op option at 13. There's other options at 13, which we're not going to talk about too much. Um, but Joseph of Harlequins is another one. So we need a 13 to come through to you know challenge Henry Slade, who is, I think, just getting on a little bit now, although he had a good Six Nations. Um, we didn't see Tommy Freeman get a shot at 13, which would be nice, especially considering Freeman isn't ever going to be the quickest winger, but he's a great all-rounder and could do great at 13, but didn't get any game time. I'm here. Then the other centre who was in the squad but got no game time was Max Ajomo, although we did see him in action for England A and he looked fantastic against Portugal second team. But I would love to see him on tour in the summer. An option at 12. Lawrence could go to 13 as well. So maybe that's a way they could go at 13. Because Ajomo has got those skills that Henry Slade has. But he's got that stepping game, that acceleration game as well. So I'd love to see Ajomo go. And maybe have an Ajomo-Lawrence combination at some point. Then the wings. Elliot Daly. Once again, he does what Elliot Daly does these days. Decent skills, good kick chase. He's not really going to beat players one-on-one. -on -one. Same in the World Cup. But if you want a player who can cover positions, who will be reliable at what he does, OK for me. I think we probably need to move on, but he played so well, I'm putting it as a question mark. I do think we need to have at least one power and pace man. Faye Wabusu, I know we've only seen a brief uh, moment of his career, but I do think he's got it. And I do think it's worth investing time in him, taking him on the summer and giving him plenty of minutes and let them make mistakes. If they've got the talent, I think you do need to go for that. Freeman's done a great job on the wing. Like I said, he's not particularly fast, but he hits hard. He's fast enough. So he's gained a stack of experience in this Six Nations, and that's really going to help him. I'd love to see him move into 13, like I mentioned. 
and there was that opportunity to see Will Muir and Tom Roebuck. Seems a bit of a waste to have them in the squads when you needed a power winger to replace Faye Wabusu. None of them were used, which seems really harsh. Uh, I know Daly did a decent job, but that was a great chance. It seems like a chance wasted, and both of them are question marks. Will they ever get back in? Will they be taken on the summer tour? Then the two full packs were fascinating. Started off with Freddie Stewart. I did want to see George Furbank to see what he could do. I thought those first two games were the time to try it, but they went with Freddie Stewart, who actually played kind of how Freddie Stewart plays. I don't think he played particularly badly. He just is never going to be that quick or agile on the counter-attack, especially, and George Furbank is. And it looks like Borthwick had a change of heart halfway through and said, sod it, let's go for it. And in comes Furbank, and he really makes a difference against Ireland. Um, a real shame he got injured early against France. But then Smith came on and did a similar sort of job to Furbank, although probably not as good as Furbank would have done. So a real style tactical change there. Do they both go on the summer tour? Or if England are going to play this style of attack, which has looked so good, do you just go for two quick counter-attacking fullbacks and Stewart? goes back to Leicester and, and many of you said that maybe Stewart should change and try and be a 12. I don't know if that's the case but if it's a wet day and you want a kicking chasing game maybe Stewart is the guy who comes in and you just have horses for courses. Anyway that's my rough rule on all the players. I don't want to go on too long but I'd love to know what you guys think of all those players. Who should go on the summer tour as it stands now? Who should it be the end of the line for and who are those question marks? Pop all those comments below. Always love to read them and I'll catch you next time.